Hi and welcome to the Virtual Instructions podcast. From creativity to slang and modern drama to psychopathy, we'll showcase a concise and original introduction to a wide range of subjects, wherever your curiosity may take you. So here is today's very short introduction. I am Susan Mizrucki, a professor of English at Boston University. I am also William Arrowsmith, professor in the humanities at Boston University and director of BU's Center for the Humanities. The title of my VSI is a very short introduction to Henry James. Henry James is um, has always been one of my, actually, I would say my favorite writer. I read him when I was very young for the first time, probably at the age of 14, and just fell in love with his dense prose style and the complexity of his literary vision. And what I have tried to do in this very short introduction to James is to convey uh, his importance in his time, um, his role as a major author of fiction in both England and America. He was a writer who managed to have major careers between the pond and and he he sold simultaneously as well in in England um, as he did in the U.S. And he was the American writer as cosmopolitan. Um, James understood, you know, from the beginning. He was he was born in 1843, and his literary career uh, took off very quickly. He published his first story when he was 21 years old. But he understood that great American writer of his era had to be a cosmopolitan figure and someone who operated not only transatlantically, but who engaged with European contexts, Western contexts as well. One of the things that, you know, I think people may not be as aware of as, as I think they should be is, is just how prominent and significant James was in his own time. Uh, he was nominated, for example, for a Nobel Prize in literature three times during his life, and he won major awards as a fiction writer. And, you know, I think one of the things that, that is so important about him is he's, he's one of the U.S. writers uh, and U.K. writers who has had a, a major afterlife. And he continues to be extremely significant, not only in the 20th century, uh, he died in 1916, but in um, the 21st century. And there have been many, many films made of his novels, film adaptations. And he has also been the subject of many um, author biographical fictions, the um, genre which has been probably um, most powerfully represented by the work of Colm Toybin. So James is very much with us. And what I think is especially interesting and important about him is the extent to which his influence extends to such a wide variety of significant authors. Um, just to give you an example, Dashiell Hammett loved his writing um, and was highly influenced by The Wings of the Dove. Toni Morrison loved James, as did James Baldwin. And Philip Roth is often channeling James um, in some of his novels. And so I think the way his work became indispensable, you know, to subsequent 20th and 21st century writers um, is another, you know, sort of key aspect of his career. I, I guess what I would also just say is James was, um, was an author who lived the authorial life in a full and complete way, which is, I think, quite unusual. It was distinctive in his own time, and I think it's, it's, it would be somewhat rare today. Um, that is to say that he was a professional writer. He had no family. He had many, many friends and acquaintances um, and, and had a voluminous correspondence of, of letters, uh, which Philip Horne has, has written about um, in his book, um, Henry James, A Life in Letters. But his life was writing and watching and looking. And he, his famous, one of his most famous phrases is, be one on whom nothing is lost. And I think that this characteristic, you know, someone who lived his life as a fictionalizer who was always searching for subjects and who found his subjects everywhere. 
um, in his experience is, is a very sort of critical aspect of James. I mean, the other thing just to say about James, I mean, he devoted himself to the writing life and he produced a voluminous number of, of major um, works over the course of it. I think uh, it's important um, to emphasize that he wrote in so many different genres. He didn't write poetry, but he wrote stories, he wrote novels, he wrote travel literature, he wrote biographies, and he wrote his own autobiographies and memoirs, which represent one of the most um, significant you know, forms that his reputation is based on. But I would say that probably he is best known and most beloved among literary people, which obviously includes me, um, for a group of novels and maybe a handful of short stories, which have been regularly anthologized, which most cultivated readers um, who know uh, the literary canon, and, and as I said, this includes um, major writers who can be considered um, the kind the kind of uh, inheritors of, of James. I should I should mention, by the way, um, in this group, Cynthia Ozick as well, and also Joyce Carol Oates, who have both written author fictions um, with James as the protagonist. But I would say that James became known for a handful of stories and a few major novels. And um, they include The Portrait of a Lady, which he published in 1881. This was his first major work. And um, I consider this in many ways to be his greatest novel um, and also one of the great novels of all time. It's a novel that draws on George Eliot and also Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter, especially in its in its um, vision of Isabel um, Archer, its, its primary protagonist, um, the American girl who goes to Europe. And uh, I think what's so striking about this novel is the fact that James wrote it at such a young age, um, that he was capable of producing such a major work at this relatively early middling point in his career. I think people should also know about The Golden Bowl and The Wings of the Dove and The Ambassadors, which are his um, major works of, you know, what's often called the major phase of his career. And um, again, people who, who love James and know his work stand by these um, three novels, which he wrote in very quick succession as um, sort of the leading works of his, of his career. And then um, there are some major stories. Um, the Beast in the Jungle is a story that is probably the most frequently anthologized of James about John Marcher, a man who lives life um, waiting for something significant to happen to him. And that's his you know, sense of himself. And it's, it's an incredible story, um, as is The Jolly Corner. And there are many others. But uh, what I would say uh, that people should know about Henry James is that he was a leading author of the 19th century, and he has continued to be a writer of major importance um, in the 20th and 21st centuries. And, you know, he's an author who who I think every person should read at some point in their lives. And let me mention one other work, which may be more familiar to people than anything he wrote, because it is a work that is sometimes introduced, at least in the U.S., in high schools, and that is Daisy Miller, a relatively early work published in 1878. It's a long novel. It, you know, James um, perfected a form called the novella, and it is a work that many people who love James might be especially familiar with. James was known for providing in his novels and stories just unbelievably, uniquely profound portraits of human character. Uh, you know, James, used, James saw characters as the engines of his novels, and that was character was was always his starting point. Um, and and he he writes in his notebooks uh, about locating, you know, in his imagination a character, and then. Uh, populating um, the world around that particular figure. He, he also was a leading expert in portraying the relationships between genders and the moral conflicts and cruelties of middle and upper class um, society in the US, um, the UK, and also Europe. And the other thing I think that's especially important to know about James is how powerfully and uniquely 
important his his portrayals of the social and psychological experiences of women and girls was. I mean, this was a writer who really understood women characters and foregrounded and privileged their experiences in his fictions. And the last detail, which I think is especially important that distinguishes his writing is that he was fascinated by the power conferred by money and the vulnerability conferred by lacking it. He, 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 uh, money was always a major issue um, in, in his fictions. And the other thing about James's writing that I think everyone should know and that, that I, I think is terrifically important, and I mentioned this already, but I, I want to just underline it, is he was, um, he was known for, you know, he made his name on what is called the international plot and wrote about uh, very often, um, you know, his main topic in so many of his stories and fictions was um, U.S. characters um, living in foreign lands. And one last point that I think is especially important about James is James was very interested in gender differences and in differences of sexuality. And he was the first major writer to write with great seriousness and empathy about the feminist movement in the U.S. and also about lesbian experience and sexuality. And um, he wrote about this in his novel, The Bostonians, which was published in uh, 1886. And um, this is his only novel um, set exclusively in the U.S. But this, this novel was really unusual in exemplifying a major Anglo-American writer um, taking lesbian identity um, seriously and exploring it in, in depth and with a great deal of empathy. And it is, a, it is a novel that I would highly recommend, especially to contemporary readers. There's much more to say about James, and I could go on talking about him and his, his fiction for you know much longer, but um, I think I will stop there and just say that I hope that this book will represent for people not only range and significance of his of his writing, but also, you know, the um, sort of phenomenal longevity James has had as, as a writer, you know, of importance for both the US and the uh, British context. Thank you for listening to the Very Short Instructions podcast. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and Stitcher to receive new episodes directly to your podcast feed. All of our episodes, new and old, can also be found on SoundCloud and YouTube at OUP Academic. Mm-hmm.